I hope to clarify in this talk um, the purpose, cause, problems, and gifts of Kundalini, as well as misconceptions, and uh, more on that, a healthy Kundalini, and kinds of risings, and the culmination of Kundalini process. Big topic, I'm gonna try to talk fast so I can get through, and um, I apologize for that and have mercy on me. Okay, so there are so many descriptions of Kundalini that it's really hard to choose one that might fit for you. Um, and the current narrative about Kundalini uh, limits and distorts um, what I think is the original term, it usurps it to refer instead to process that is sensational, difficult, unwanted, and, and those are the extremes of Kundalini process. And this narrative and discussion around it uh, causes, I think, confusion. Um, the ancient teachings on Kundalini, which is where it originated, um, are misunderstood and they're simplified, diluted, and they have been adjusted for uh, mass consumption by the West. The errors have been requoted to the extent that they have an unwarranted truthiness of their own. <clears throat> so that if it's not a spiritual emergency, it's not Kundalini. Or it should be all bliss and lots of special gifts. Uh, and people see a uh, difficult process as something that is attacking them that needs to be fought off. So without contextualizing Kundalini with some sort of informed background, people often uh, respond with panic. The original meaning of Kundalini is Shakti, a goddess, a divine, the divine. Um, it is the transformative spiritual power within every human being. <clears throat> it is the divine inner guide. Um, it is the source of spiritual development and realization and our ongoing human evolution. And I've been mentored for 30 years in a traditional Vedic system of Kundalini called Kundalini Vidya. Um, and it's very practical and uh, precise and thorough and effective. Kundalini is responsible for the great prophets and mystics and saints and sages throughout the world. She is the saint maker um, and also the contributors to culture and our great leaders. International motifs indicate that Kundalini is an ongoing aspect of our collective unconscious because it is that which makes our species shine and evolve. Um, so the lovely and unremarkable Kundalini processes don't get much press. Um, they're underreported, but the gifts of those more gentle processes would include greater awareness and intelligence, creativity, sensitivity, acuity, interest in things unseen, altruism, and a certain spark or je ne sais quoi. Um, misconceptions about Kundalini process. I hope to clarify some. I'll start with a very frequently and beloved term, awakened. Uh, this indicates that Kundalini has been asleep. She never sleeps. Even when she is in her little cubicle in the root chakra, she is very active. She has to keep all of the life functions 
of a human being going, as well as the higher uh, capacities of human life. Um, a, a better term would be kundalini is released or arisen. Um, another misunderstanding, kundalini can only enter sushumna nadi. No, as you'll see, there are many kinds of kundalini risings and six shakti nadis that she can enter or that she can enter ida or pingala. These are prana nadis and kundalini has no access to them. Another energy must be rushing up the spine and exploding in the head in order for it to be kundalini. This is extremely rare actually. Um, or that kundalini sequentially opens the six chakras one after the other. Again, extremely rare. Only one kind of process does that. Some uh, modern yogis even say that kundalini is a block to spiritual development. That's just blatantly wrong. And the great scriptures of the Vedic literature, all of the different kinds of scriptures uh, praise kundalini as the, the source of spirituality and the guide for it. Um, others see kundalini as just one brand of hatha yoga or think kundalini yoga is the only spiritual path that deals with kundalini. Um, all spiritual paths, in fact, are kundalini paths because kundalini, by whatever name, is that which guides us to spiritual realization and is the source of it. Um, some people recommend that you, to fix a, a difficult kundalini process, you should stop all spiritual things, be very external, eat a lot of heavy food. This may dull or suppress the so-called symptoms or postpone them, but it will not improve or stop a kundalini process. Kundalini is often misdiagnosed as uh, being psychotic, manic, or epileptic, or some other malady. And huge doses of drugs are sometimes prescribed. This may, again, mask symptoms, but it doesn't help process, and it may harm a person. Some say that psychedelic drugs can initiate a kundalini process. The elders say not so. It's, it may, it's risky, it may harm. Um, some say kundalini um, can be improved by energy techniques or visualization techniques. No, they can pacify uh, prana that is overexcited, but they don't affect, they're not strong enough to affect actual kundalini process. Some practitioners say they can move kundalini, but they're thinking of kundalini as energy or prana. Kundalini is not prana. Prana is more external. Kundalini is way deep inside. Others want to use really dramatic, intense interventions. These are harmful and they, and they do not yield a healthy kundalini process. Some religions say that kundalini is dangerous, unspiritual of the devil, and that it should be avoided at the cost of your very soul. Others that it's not for Westerners. Some think of it only as something occult or esoteric rather than spiritual. Some say that it's sexy and that it will either enhance your spiritual, your sexual experience or that you will be overcome by desire. Some say that it's due to bad astrals and you should have an exorcism. Even an exorcism 
they may get really bad astrals, but it won't improve Kundalini process. Lots of people talk about opened chakras and that all of these wonderful qualities listed in such a Kanupana, for example, will come forth. But Vedic literature is full of hyperbole and it's talking about not just your Kundalini process, but all this data that was thematicized into one general cache of possibilities. Um, people advise prayer also, which is very, very helpful, but generally insufficient to improve a process, especially if the prayer is, please make this just go away. Won't happen. Now, something about the causes of kundalini process in the first place. Without an explanation, people think, oh, it's by chance, it's capricious, it's a big mystery, who knows? But the Vedic literature knows and the oral tradition in which I was trained by my teacher, Swami Chandra Shekhar Nan Saraswati. Um, Kundalini can be released and will rise when the mind is very focused and the prana vitality is very high. These can also improve a difficult process with the correct spiritual practices and sincere spiritual focus and um, time done over time. Um, Psychological or physical trauma can also be a catalyst for the release of Kundalini, but this leads to the two unstable kinds of Kundalini risings, which because they touch the petals in Sahasrara and then fall back down, they give um, siddhis or special abilities, gifts. And therefore, those are sought after by the occult groups, and they use these dramatic um, interventions to yield a rising. Some people want kundalini just to get the gifts it can give. But you can get these gifts in other ways by intense focus over time on a particular thing that you love, like music or writing or science, or um, by occult methods, which again are risky, especially for spiritual life. So the kind of gifts I'm talking about would include uh, special talents in the fields of science, technology, philosophy, administration, the arts, as well as charisma, genius, and psychic and healing abilities. Difficulties in Kundalini process are due to weaknesses, blocks, and flaws in the person's vehicle, their body, prana system, um, and mind. Um, it's not Kundalini's fault for sure Kundalini is the divine within. Nor is it the uninformed experiencer's fault because they don't know what to do. Difficult risings often lead to fear, upset, denial, resistance. All of these are futile. And Kundalini won't just go away. Counseling and education are very, very helpful, but they won't correct a rising, but they are needed usually. Um, the only solution to a difficult kundalini process is a spiritual solution. So the individual must come to welcome the transformative process that their own kundalini shakti has initiated for them because in some ways they're ready if they will just get their head around it 
and get a spiritual perspective on it. So they must adapt, accept, search for guidance, engage cooperatively in a spiritual uh, approach and change. You've got to change. It, even healthy, stable Kundalini risings, by the way, can sometimes be uncomfortable. Every Kundalini process is unique to the individual. There are six Shakti Nadis. Three of them are very rare. Two of them are deflected. And one of them is the ever popular Sushumna. Um, there are variations and levels in each of the three most common risings where all of our consultees um, originally were experiencing when they came to us. So, and there are clear patterns in these three. To become healthy and stable, all three risings require a particular lifestyle and focus. This includes objective awareness, positive attitude, virtuous clean living, good nutrition, appropriate activities, adequate rest, peaceful mind, faithful perseverance, loving trust, focused discernment, strong spiritual orientation, appropriate spiritual practice, and grace. Because culminate, Kundalini Shakti leads to the culmination of process, the, the goal of all the spiritual traditions, the effort and changes required to meet the criteria for healthy process are well worth it. Now let's look at those three kinds of risings. The two unstable or <clears throat> deflected risings are responsible for most of the reports of spiritual emergency that we hear about. And they touch the petals of Sahasrara, but this does not, the gifts that yields, it, is not a way to figure out if somebody is really spiritually advanced. Siddhis are not an indication of spiritual realization. Caveat emptor. Saraswati Nadi. It is outside the central column, which has four coaxial nadis, parallel to the to Eda Nadi, which is on the left. It has grantis or knots that block kundalini's advance at the heart and brow. Um, it intermittently can rise and then fall to sahasrara and gives those special abilities. And the fluctuations of it going up and down um, also cause fluctuations in the mood and life of the experiencer. Saraswati is a goddess of language, culture, and the arts. And the gifts she bestows are often in those categories. Um, Saraswati experiencers have greater access to or awareness of the subtle realm. So they tend to be good in the esoteric arts. And they have esoteric interests. They can also access astrals more easily. So they have a temptation to go further into the occult to develop these skills at the risk of their spiritual development because their prana is siphoned and their mental interest to those topics. Saraswati is often initiated by a trauma, an extreme event, of emotional or uh, physical nature. Um, and the experiencers tend to be sensitive, temperamental, different, eccentric, and they can sometimes be androgynous. They 
can be brilliant and original, creative, unique. Uh, but their discernment isn't so great. Um, so they may be a little disorganized also. And this kind of rising needs to be diverted into sushumna in order for spiritual progress to take place. Other like why is it like Sisyphus going up and down until that happens? Vatra Nadi. It's the second of the four coaxial nadis in the central column. It starts in the second chakra, goes down to the first, and then up to the uh, Brahmarandra, which is the edge of the higher edge of Saraswati, opening brain centers more in men than women, because there are only two belts in the Vajra system in men, but there are five in women. It slows things down. And well, I won't explain all that. Um, it's not sexist, I assure you. It's physiology, subtle body physiology. Um, Vajra people are intense. They are driven by desire and strong yearning. They tend to have romantic or sexual preoccupations, and they can be energetically attractive and compelling. They have strong um, prana field, and it can affect the prana fields of others. Um, they have impressive talents and very good intelligence. Again, it must be diverted into um, sushumna for spiritual progress and their yearning must become spiritual for that to happen. Sushumna nadi, it's the outermost of the central column. It is the one preferred by the great spiritual traditions. Uh, fewer complications, you don't have to divert it. It's already in line for the elevation. Um, there are three pillars in the, well, base and heart and brow chakras, but that block her elevation, but also she can be blocked in the throat, as we'll see. Heart chakra, it's unstable, so Kundalini goes up and down from there to Muladhara and back. Um, it can be fairly easily gotten by um, religious people, the great religions um, prepare for that. But the person's prana was too low to get past the, um, the pillar um, or linga cap in the heart, so it got stuck below it. Um, heart chakra people are empathic and giving but because it's unstable, they also are affected by the lower chakra qualities. Um, they're less discerning and naive, so they're influenced by the company they keep. Um, when their prana is strong enough, the process can elevate. Throat has 16 nadis, and they create a web in which toxins gather, and that blocks kundalini at that level. It is a stable rising. The nadis extend out to the head, arms, and torso, giving talents in all of those areas. Um, throat chakra people tend to be the pillars of society. They have positions of responsibility, power, and influence. But this creates stress, heat in the head. And so they're tempted to reduce that with adverse behaviors that are unhealthy for them and their spiritual advancement. And it increases the toxins, which keeps them stuck. They tend to have big egos and be stubborn and ambitious um, when they eschew those qualities and get a spiritual motive, kundalini can elevate to the brow, um, which is under a linga. So we're talking lower brow. 
They are intelligent, focused, strong. They have good intuition and discernment. They tend to be skilled professionals and teachers and leaders. But yeah, they have big egos, uh, strong wills and ambition. They tend to be proud of their accomplishments um, and, and have students or followers. But nonetheless, they're just satisfied because they can almost see, see where they could go. And they're just satisfied. When they get really spiritual, process can elevate they to upper brow to makara point, which makes the process healthy and stable. It is the gateway to advanced spiritual experience. So it tr true spirituality and is the prerequisite for the, that advancement. And it is what the spiritual traditions are aiming at to get someone at a good base camp that will keep them safe as they finish their ascent. At Makara, there's more clarity and calm, but also a phase of purgation of the mind and purification of the prana. Then there are upper process routes, half a dozen, maybe a dozen of them, um, that make their way through the Sahasrara system and yield the stages of dualistic samadhis described in the Yoga Sutras and open brain centers. Then the pinnacle, Bindu, which is non-dual experience, real non-dual, not imagined. There's only one of us. Let's buy everybody a Coke. No, actual, no phenomena beyond all manifestation oneness this is the goal of the spirit of the non-dual spiritual traditions um jesus and buddha were non-dualist by the way um and even at that high state they go through expanding process more purification more awareness and understanding and, and spiritual knowledge and sanctity. Um, so the more of us reach spiritual advancement, the quicker our evolution as a species can be. And we can develop into Just the thought of it, I'm, I'm in awe of our potential. That we can be the compassionate, gifted, and wise species that we were meant to be. And more, more fair, more easily to solve the many problems and sufferings of the world. This is the very purpose of the divine, of the earth experiment, that we should become human angels. So we are high evolutionaries, and we are the growing tip of this divine endeavor. I wish you blessings. I wish you well on your spiritual journey. I pray that you find good, well, good grief, good guidance, <laughs> and, and reach the culmination. Namaste.